Skahamish comes out of nowhere last year with the triangle, absolutely spellbinds audiences, does very, very well on the album of the year list, and uh, as I said, it was a triple album. It was huge. And yet here we are. We're back again. We have a new EP by Skahamish right here in 2017. Just about a year later, the Maldoror chants Hermaphrodite. This is based off of the works uh, that chants the Maldoror by uh, Trumont, I believe. If I screw that up, I apologize profusely. But I'll tell you who's not apologizing. It's Skahamish. Skamish isn't apologizing. They are assaulting us once again, and they are also not going to be apologetic based around the fact that they continue to take a look at the rule book for conventional black metal, even conventional avant-garde black metal, and just kind of casts it aside saying, eh, maybe I'll read this later. Probably going to be kind of boring, though. Considering this EP has a charm all its own, and it's going to be one that I think is going to kind of perplex some fans as opposed to necessarily draw them in, and Chances are, that may be the exact reason for its existence. This may purely be a 100% art piece. Uh, the best way that I could really channel this is in two different parts of this seven-track affair. We will kind of get to that as we go along. Uh, however, this is one that is not going to necessarily be for the faint of heart or the faint of mind, considering it is a little bit out there. Now, prologue and the... Weighty Burden of an Eternal Secrets are the two longest cuts off of this album, starting this off. It's amazing to think of a prologue being one of the longest songs on a release, but this is no ordinary prologue. This instead feels a lot like Babylonian Drone. It's interesting how this is really set up. There's a very respectful kind of prayerful atmosphere about this, very meditative either that or... But even with all of those words being said, there is just this sort of real evil presence that feels stained all around this very basic sounding composition. We are getting, really, what sounds almost like ritualistic prayer, ritualistic belief that is chronicling perhaps the rise of a dark god or the rise of an abomination, a sinful, sinful wench of a deity as opposed to one that is meant to save us all. Or perhaps this sinful wench is meant to, however, we, those that are in belief of some lovely gentleman that, you know, works nine to five and is middle class is just wrong. But at any rate, the music for this is barely there. In fact, that's what gives this prologue its very chilling demeanor. It is one that feels a lot like that Babylonian drone idea simply because of the sort of old-style charm. Like, you could almost imagine this being the, the chilling background sounds of an episode of, uh, you know, Stargate or something like that. They do a very good job in really crafting this very sort of devout and almost sinister atmosphere out of very little, and it's something that extends into the weighty burden of an eternal secret. That's the thing. These two tracks almost feel uh, very so complimentary that they could have been one long uh, real uh, idea, but I do like the fact that this one was split up, considering as this track continues forward, we do start to get a little bit more in the way of your traditional Skahamish approach, a little bit more of that traditional avant-garde approach, but you start to get lyricism that is not really lyricism. It's actually direct quotation uh, from uh, the, the, the source material from Les Chants de Maldador. And it is one that feels a little bit off kilter, but that's kind of the point. Once again, everything here that feels a little bit wrong is actually very right. It's actually what continues to uh, substantiate just the very... A strange atmosphere that is being built through these tracks and the minimalism that you are gaining from this is all the more eerie it's this one of the strangest starts of an album that perhaps you may ever hear it's almost as though they decided to adapt a very Olverian approach an Oliver approach and then decided to take it to a very strange place good on them I suppose moving on to uh, along the road that uh, leads to Bedlam going into These Tresses Are Sacred. Once again, we are still mired in this atmosphere, except this is one that's starting to open up a little bit with the former track. Uh, we are starting to get a little bit more of that heavy approach to it, but once again, it is being done very solemnly, very methodically. It's a very cerebral nature to try to display uh, sort of this road to Bedlam that is being spake, uh, spake of uh, really by the source material, and then these tresses are sacred. 
takes a completely different approach, takes this down to the lowest of notches, very much interwoven like an interlude, breaking this album into two separate parts and causing some of the earliest tones and knocks of the next track, which is May His Illusion, uh, last until uh, Dawn's Awakening. And this track is where we notice the change, the secondary portion of this album, which has a lot more of lyricism that feels like traditional lyricism uh, in that traditional fashion that will remind some users of what they were able to experience on Triangle with this track and uh, Chimerial Hope and Do Not Open Your Eyes, the last three cuts off of this album, but still maintaining enough of a presence within this story, maintaining enough of a presence within this source material in order for it to all fit. It almost sounds like this devotion that we got from the first part of the album has been broken and destroyed, seared by chaos, by the sky opening up and delivering a destructive Result. Wow. Um, honestly, the first time I listened to this, I wasn't sure how it was going to go. I thought that I was going to be uh, coming to you with grave news, uh, feeling as though this was not that great. But this is an EP that needs to be experienced in its completed way, in its completed format. Because if you don't, then you're going to be a little bit lost in subtext. You're going to be a little bit lost as to what it all means. Everything is not necessarily resolved by the end of this, but it is instead one that feels like it makes a lot more sense. It has a very nice duality to it. There is that chaos at the end that is interwoven with the avant-garde black metal that is deliverance from the Babylonian drone that the opening couple of tracks set up to really deliver the atmosphere that was necessary to facilitate those last three songs and to facilitate that chaos. So I'm here actually to tell you after multiple spins that I'm quite pleased with this. If this is part of a larger project as I have been hearing then I am stoked to hear the remainder of it because this is an excellent foundation for everything that could potentially come after this. Scott Amish could write three to four to five albums a year. I think they have the ability and they're right now on that songwriting plateau where no matter where they go, even if they dive into the absolute strange and, and, and sort of out of right field, pissing on the rule book avant-garde style, they still have the songwriting chops and they still have all of the right reasons for doing so. A very devout sort of a presentation, either that or a, a real respect for the craft and wanting to ensure that it is the best it could be. Uh, where they are going to be making meaningful music for quite some time. Uh, it's an EP, so I don't give EP scores traditionally. Instead, this is one that I'm going to give a favorable nod to. You should certainly scope this out. It's a fitting companion to Triangle, even though it has nothing to do with Triangle. Instead, it's one that shows uh, the metamorphosis of Skahamish into its own entity that perhaps by the end of their career, we could say we have never seen anything like it before. I want to know what you think about it. Let me know in the comments below. I'm Cover Killer Nation. I just dropped my damn thing on the bobber. I'll talk to you later. See ya.